Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about databases. By the end of this episode, you'll be able to store all your MQTT data inside an SQL-like database. So let's get started. Let's open up PuTTY and connect to our server via SSH. Before we actually install SQLite, we're going to just update and upgrade our server. We use this command. And to upgrade everything, we use a similar command. And we let that run through. All these commands will be made available to you in a text file that I'll link down below in the description. I just want to point out, you might notice when I'm running commands inside the shell, I'm using the command sudo before the command. Sudo just means super user do. It's one of the ways that Linux uses to make sure that things are kept secure. It's essentially running things as root or admin so that it elevates the permissions. Without sudo, it won't really work. I could go and write apt-get update, and you'll see there it'll say things like permission denied because it's running under my username that I've logged in with. So it's just a security measure. Let's install SQLite. To do that, it's pretty straightforward. sudo again. There we go, and that should bring it down, and anything that's required on top of it will also be installed. Well, there you go, that was nice and quick. So SQLite is now installed. We're gonna install something called PHP Lite Admin. This is a great tool to administer your SQLite databases and actually interact with them and do some pretty cool stuff. It is especially useful if you haven't got a lot of experience using databases like this. There's a few dependencies that you'll need to install to make this work properly. The first is PHP MB string. And we need to stop and start Apache, the web server. Next up, let's create a directory where we're gonna store our databases. And we're just gonna call it databases and we'll put that in the root. So we're gonna Use the command sudo mkdir, which is make directory. And we're going to put that in the root of our system. We'll call that databases. You can call it whatever you want. And we want to change the permissions on that so that it is readable and writable and all the rest of it. So we're going to change the permission using chmod. PHP Lite Admin is just a PHP script that runs on top of your web server. So let's go to the root of our web server, which by default should be this folder. And we can see there we have index.html in there. We need to create a folder in here. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna call it database. So we're gonna make that directory, uh, which you should see now in that original directory. And if we go into it, we want to now get the PHP Lite Admin script. So we just run that command and that will pull it down. And you see it's quite small, so it came down quite quickly. And now we need to unzip it. And we'll get rid of the original downloaded file. Next up, there are two ways you can configure PHP Lite Admin. You can either do it directly in the script. So if we have a look at the files that are created, there is a php lite admin .php. So we can go and modify that directly, but a better practice is to rather use a config file, which is over here. But to be able to use that config file, we need to just rename it. There we go. And we are going to now edit it. Okay, so now that we're in this file, password by default is gonna be admin. So we're gonna change that. I'm just gonna use that for now. Remember the directory we created earlier to store our databases? Well, we're gonna put that directory over here. It's in the root and it's in a folder called databases. And that's pretty much it. If you want, you can specify the actual database you're gonna use, but it's really not necessary and you'll see why in just a second. This here is gonna look for all the databases. There obviously isn't any there just yet, but we're gonna create one. So Control X to close Nano. 
and tap Y to save the settings. There we go. We are pretty much done at this moment. So let's go have a look and see what is happening with PHP Lite Admin. So we need to go to the IP address of our Raspberry Pi server. And if we just do it at that point, it's gonna show the index.html file that we saw earlier, but we created a folder called database and it is php light admin dot php and there we go the password we just created so i use cc pass and here it says there are no databases available so we need to create one and we'll create one called iot dot db once you've done that there you go we're in php light admin we're inside a database called iot.db and we can start creating tables and we can start modifying and viewing the data that's within that database. Let's create a table for our IoT sensors so we can start storing some data. What you need to do is click on SQL and again, this will be in the description below, but we can see there create table IoT sensors and we've got some of the field names that we're gonna use for our project. So we're going to click go for that. And there should now be a table, which you can see over there. IoT and the structure. We have a device name. We have which sensor we're looking at, the reading, and then, of course, the timestamp. Let's start putting some data into our database. So let's go to node red. And let's create a new flow. which we'll just, we'll just call this uh, DB example. Instead of recreating the wheel, let's go and copy some of the nodes that we've already created previously. So we'll just take these two and paste it into the DB example. Now I'll deploy this and we can have a look at what this is doing at the moment. So there we go, the data is coming in. And we can see different plot points if we just cursor along. You can see that a reading's coming through. It's coming through every 20 seconds or so. And the humidity as well. Humidity is just a point in time. I haven't got that on a graph, but I can do if I wanted to. However, if we're using a database, we can actually store this data indefinitely because what will happen is if I reboot the Raspberry Pi at the moment, this will reset back to whatever the current time is. Actually, I can show you that happening. Let's reboot the Raspberry Pi right now. So firstly, you can see their connection lost, but when this does come back, you'll see that it starts up at the beginning again. So there we go. It's waiting for its first reading, but you can see that everything's blank right now because it doesn't know what's happening. So there we go. We've got 86% coming through on the humidity sensor, and we have 17.3 coming through on the temperature sensor. And in 20 seconds, that will show another reading, and so on and so forth. Let's record our data to our database. To do that in Node-RED, you're gonna to need to add the SQLite nodes within our palette. To do that, go to the top right, click on Manage Palette, and under Install, do a search for SQLite. The first one that comes up, node-red-node-sqlite, is the one you want. And uh, you can see I already have that installed, but just install that. It'll take a little while. It might need you to reboot your Raspberry Pi. If so, nice and easy to do. In our palette, you'll see that there is a new area called storage, and we can see the SQL light node that we can add. So once we've added that to our flow, double click on it, and we're gonna add an SQL light database. Very easy. Databases slash iot.db. As easy as that, we're referencing the folder that we created or the directory we created, as well as the database we created afterwards. Click add, give it a name, so we'll call it iot database, and we can reference this throughout our project now. Now, we need to get data inside there. Now, I can't cover off SQL 
in in one or even multiple videos. So I need to be a little bit brief here with how this works. There are some great resources online. W3schools.com is a great place to go if you want to learn a little bit of SQL and, and other programming languages as well. But I'm going to show you the basics of what you need to do to be able to get this data inside our database. Let's add a function node. This will help us to put the data inside the database. So we just need to drag that onto the screen and we're going to connect up. We'll do the temperature one first and we're gonna have this coming out into the database. So it's gonna go through to the function node as well as to our graph, which is graphing the temperature over there. In the function node, let's open that up and we can see it's returning a message, but we're gonna add some code in there. So let's talk through this code and I'll explain what's actually happening. First thing we're doing is we're creating a timestamp. So this is reading the date, which is over here, and then just converting it into a format that will be readable. We then have another variable called the device, which I'm going to be calling the grow tent. This could be a greenhouse, could be a polytunnel, or whatever other area that you're using to collect this data. The sensor, I'm just giving it a nice short name of T for temperature. And then we're going to develop the SQL query. Now, this is what inserts the data inside the database. So we can see here, we've started off with the basics. So we're going to insert into the table we created earlier called IoT sensors. We're going to be inserting timestamp, device name, sensor, and reading. These are the names of the fields that we're actually going to put the data into. So the names that are in the table themselves. Down here is where we're extending the SQL statement. So we're saying that the SQL statement is equal to what we had previously said over here. So that's this plus, and here is where we're adding the fields that we actually want to populate. The bottom here, the topic is equal to this SQL statement. So the topic is what we're sending across to the database because the way that SQLite works or the node works within uh, node red is that it uses the topic to actually do things within the database. So if I deploy this now, we should start getting some data populating our database. So let's have a look over here. We can see data is coming through. And let's go have a look at the database as well. going to IoT sensors. Here we go. We can see that we've got these four rows that are in there and that'll keep on populating as data keeps coming through. So every 20 seconds or so, I'll get data populating this. Now this is stored permanently. If I restart my server, this data is still going to be there, which means we can do some very cool things with it later on. So there we go. We can see another line has been added and that's because another sensor reading has come through. In this episode, you've learned how to get data into a database so that that data is stored in a permanent manner. In the next episode, I'm going to be taking this a step further. I'm going to show you how to take data out of your database and actually make it useful. I'm also going to show you some things to help you with being a bit more efficient with how you store this data inside your database. You don't want to be writing data to your SD card constantly. So I'll show you a quick function which will enable you to limit the amount of times that you're writing to your SD card. So it extends the life of it. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed it. And until the next time, stay safe and stay spicy.